If they create a definition, it is going to be so ambiguous that it's going to rope in a whole lot of otherwise innocent people. We are the Armed Attorneys today. We're talking about the Biden administration's latest announcement when it comes to gun control. This was announced on March the 14th, 2023. Now, there's a lot of things going on here. There is some old hat stuff. Not too worried about that. There's some kind of new twists to the gun grabbers playbook. We're going to be talking through each of those points. But before we begin, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And to start things off, Mr. Edwin Walker, what's going on? He's issued a press release. He's had a press conference. He's making bold announcements about implementing uh, parts of the bipartisan Safer Communities Act that was passed last year. So what this shows politically is that he's doubling down on his gun control rhetoric. He's not backing away from it in light of the midterm elections, which was at one time speculated, but clearly not happening. And he's also, I believe, using this press conference to kind of be a backhanded slap or kind of guilt the Congress for not passing more gun control legislation because he begins all of it and all of his uh, surrogates who are also at the press conference and I'm sure will be on the news this evening talking about this are all got to say, well, the bipartisan Safer Communities Act was a good start, yeah. but it doesn't go far enough. And so that's what this is. Obviously, there is some substantive stuff to it. Uh, number one, defining or redefining what is somebody engaged in the business and what this is designed to do. It's designed to do an end run around the fact that the federal government has no constitutional authority to regulate a non-commercial transaction of firearms between individuals who live in the same states. Yeah, and, and we saw this come out of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act and the redefinition of what it meant to be engaging in the business. You know, if you recall what the law said or the Code of Federal Regulation said prior to that enactment or the U.S. Code actually to the enactment of that law was that a person had to be engaging in the business with the objective to make a livelihood. And now they've kind of turned that on its head and said, you know, if you're motivated to make a profit, again, you'd have to be engaged in repeated sales or dispositions of firearms. But we see that even when you have the biggest piece of gun control passed in, you know, three decades is not enough. Right. And I think that one thing that's particularly scary, and I saw this in another news story, that this this redefinition, of course, is going to be given to the Department of Justice. And Mayor Garland, as the attorney general, has kind of this order to to cram down this definition that an individual who either sells or offers to sell five guns within a 12 month period is going to be deemed to be a license, a dealer which means that they'll have to get an FFL. If they don't get an FFL, they're going to be prosecuted as an unlicensed dealer. And of course, if they do get an FFL, now every single one of their guns has to go through a background check, which brings up the issue. There's always been this exception that a collector is allowed to increase and decrease his collection, and he is specifically not included as being a dealer. So let's say there's an individual who simply takes five of his guns to a pawn shop and sells them. Is he now a, an unlicensed dealer? Somebody who puts half their gun collection up for, for auction with an auction house. Is that person now have to get a dealer's license? Yeah, or, or a widow who's liquidating her husband's, you know, firearms collection because she's got to pay the bills. Exactly. Is she a firearms estate, dealer? Exactly, at an estate sale. And so this this expansion, um, they already have to prove you're an unlicensed dealer through these continual continuous works, continuous transactions. If they create a definition, uh, it is going to be so ambiguous that it's going to rope in a whole lot of otherwise innocent people. And the next part that I wanted to talk about uh, that's very interesting, and again, there's a lot to this, but a lot of it is things that we've already seen. They're just pouring money into programs that you know, we don't need to, to educate y'all on, but the kind of new approach that I wanted to talk about that showing up here is bringing in the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, when it comes to marketing. Oh, yeah. And, and for those of you who don't know about the FTC, the FTC is one of the most powerful federal agencies out there because basically they regulate everything we see and hear and can do about the free exchange of goods and services. Yeah. And I think the gun grabbers have identified, I don't want to say correctly, but I do think they have spotted a weakness in the Protection and Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. That law generally insulates gun manufacturers and dealers 
with regard to firearms. And, you know, as long as they're not breaking their contracts, they're not making defects in their, in the guns themselves. One thing that's carved out there is marketing materials. We saw this in several of the lawsuits. We saw this in the Sandy Hook lawsuit. We saw this in the, uh, I mean, now filed lawsuit against Daniel Defense out of the El Paso shooting. I mean, we see this seems to be identified as a whole for the Second Amendment. Yes, um, this marketing. And and the thing about it is, is that they've really, you talk about hyperbole, you talk about exaggeration. Uh, they talk about, we're going to go after guns that are marketed to children. I don't see any marketing to children. There's no semi-automatic rifles that are marketed to children. This is t- This is totally a red herring. And as we know, Children learn about guns, not from not from advertisement, but from where? Uh, video games. But I mean, you know, you go to the convenience store, you know, you go to the checkout line and at the children's eye level at the at the counter, that's where they keep all the guns for the kids, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that doesn't happen. That's not a real thing. Uh, where they learn about these are video games. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I talk to who say, I bought this gun because it was my favorite gun in Call of Duty or Counter-Strike or whatever game they're playing. I don't know the last time that I saw a gun ad on a television. No, the children are not buying guns and ammo magazine off of the news rack and looking at the ads and saying, that's the one I want. No, no. The other thing that came up here that was pretty interesting that I wanted to talk about was military advertising. Yeah. So they're so not only are they saying we're going after ads to target children, but we're going after ads to the general public, you and me. They're going after ads that use overt military marketing. Military mar- first of all, I like don't even army know what, of one mar- military. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. And I mean, is some it just because a guy's wearing an olive green t-shirt is that military advertising? I mean, my God, I see a flashlight advertisement ten times a day that is you that ad- ask you to buy it because it's military tough. Yeah. So is any ad that implicates any kind of military use or military assisted design, is that going to fall within this? Because if it does, to me, this presents a huge First Amendment problem in addition to its Second Amendment implications. The last two issues that came up that I wanted to talk about was first, I mean, they've made a a clear indication that they intend on going even harder on federal firearms licensed dealers, gun stores. Uh, than they already are. Right now, they have a zero tolerance policy, and we've talked about this in previous videos, uh, for violations. You know, maybe they make a accident on a Form 4473. You know, they have a technical violation when transferring a firearm. You know, they're trying to run that gun store out of business. I don't know how much tougher they can go on gun stores, but here they have sent a clear signal that they intend to go after federal firearms licensed dealers even harder. The other one that I thought was kind of interesting was They want to use the Department of Defense's acquisition of firearms to further firearms and public safety practices. Now, this reminds me, and kind of sounds like a callback to the Obama administration, of buying guns and ammo in the quantities that make it unavailable for the consumer market. That's what that reminds me of. What does that sound like to you? Oh, yeah. No, it's it's very Orwellian. Anytime you have the largest federal agency, the Department of Defense, that is specifically directed to buy up more ammo, there's only one reason for that. Either we've shipped too much of it to the Ukraine, or they're wanting to keep it out of the hands of American citizens. So if you were looking for a break on ammo prices, I could probably tell you that that's not going to happen. It is also a little convenient that the administration announces some of the biggest you know, executive actions on gun control in his entire tenure kind of on the heels of a banking crisis. I don't know if he's trying to distract from that all at all, but this seems to be kind of playing into, hey, look over here as well, because uh, like we said, that while there's maybe nine key points to this executive order, um, the vast majority deal with just pumping money into things that the administration is already doing. So um, where do you think we go from here? It's draconian misdirection. <laughs> That's what it is. So yes, they're they're imposing these uh, terrible overreaches, and they're doing it to yes distract people from actual issues. That's gonna the, what they used to call kitchen table issues. Sure, and that is inflation, banking crises, product shortages, all these that affect regular citizens by uh, saying we can just slip in all of these aspects of government overreach, and you won't be you know you won't be able to fight back against it. 
but we're interested to what you have to say about this. Did you watch the Biden announcement? What were your takeaways? So make sure to leave us a comment in the comment section down below, but we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. And like I said, always question and comment down below. We read all of your comments. And until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys.